In the first episode of this project, you watched me doing several prior actions. I did apply this Japanese paper, I took out the painting of the stretching frame, I removed the old linen and I did apply a new one. Now I already took the painting out of the working frame and I can start taking out the Japanese paper. This paper was protecting during my manipulation, but now I can take it out. And to take it out, I need to moist it because it needs to soak the gelatin that was in the glue. Normally it came out quite easily, but this one is behaving a little bit stubborn. But I think it's also a little bit of my fault. I think this gelatin probably is more powerful than the other one I had before. So I think that next time I will have to use much less quantity. With the painting free from the paper, I can flat it on my working table for the next steps. Of course that I am very careful with all the paintings that I take care. But this one is a painting from the 17th century and it is Italian school. And when I refer the term Italian school, it means it is a painting that was painted in Italy, probably by an Italian artist painter and following the tendencies of that country in that time or date. This applies to Dutch school, French school, Belgium school and so on. But like I was saying, this painting is very old and I need to know it more in deep. So in this situation, an exam under ultraviolet light is mandatory. I need to be sure about the varnish layer and the existence of previous retouching. So, with my eyes protected with these UV light protecting glasses, I can start. This green blue reflex on the surface of the painting is an indication of the presence of the varnish. And the dark spots you see are probably retouches that were done before in order to preserve this painting. This vertical long spot looks like a restoration that was done before because it reacts to the UV light becoming darker, so normally it is a retouching. Now that I know more about this painting, I can advance to the cleaning process. I use this wax with several cleaning agents that will break the dirt or grime that is in the surface of the painting. This dirt that can be smoke from a fireplace or from candles but also can be nicotine from cigarettes, for example. If this grime is out, I can easily access to the varnish. I already cleaned several parts of this painting, so now I am more confident to approach the models or characters in this painting. Cleaning a face in a painting is always something to be very careful, especially in this case. So I will do it in a circular, slow mechanical motion. The brush bristles are medium soft, enough only to free the dirt. 
With a cotton ball, I can remove now the wax with the grime and it is good when I see that the dirt is now on the cotton and not in the painting. With the painting now clean, I can better access the varnish layer, but first, I need to perform some tests to come to the conclusion which solvent is better to use. And today, I want to share with you how I personally do my solvent testing. This way, when I in my future videos say I already made my solvent tests and I already know which solvent is better for this project, you already know what I did before. For this painting I did choose 4 different solvents. I do order them from the less strong to the strongest and for that order I will test them one after the other. I take my notes about how much time that solvent needs in order to provoke a reaction in the varnish. Basically, the varnish will absorb the solvent and it swallows. Then there is more space in the particles of the varnish, turning it more easily to be removed. I performed the testing in two ways, one with only contact in sequences of 5 seconds and I see if there is varnish in the swab, the other with mechanical motion also with blocks of 5 motions each. I use different colors to distinguish the different data from each solvent. After, when I analyze my notes, I pay attention to the time and number of rollings each solvent needs. 
I normally will choose the one that has a faster action, so it needs less time in contact with the paint, but I also take in consideration how aggressive that solvent is. I can control the action of the solvent with a small UV light that I also have. With this solvent, the varnish reacts in the first block of five motions, and I can be sure with the UV light too. I already know which solvent is the best one to remove this varnish, and I can start. I can notice that it is removing well. After removing the varnish in all painting, I can start to apply the filling in small little holes and other imperfections on the surface of the canvas.
I did apply the filling on the places that was needed and in the next episode of this project you'll watch me doing the retouching on the painting. If you'd like to watch the first part of this project, click on this video. To watch another video then click here. Thank you very much for watching and I meet you on the next video.